All right, Firemind here, and today we have a very exciting tutorial because today we are going to learn how to create a very simple health bar, which is also interactive. So whenever I collide with this cube, which I totally missed just now, so whenever I collide with that cube, you can see the health bar is actually acting accordingly and decreasing because that cube is damn hot. That's why it's red and it's taking my health away. So that's what we're going to create today. And I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so we are going to start off with a pretty basic game. So I just have a ball set up here, which is actually from the standards assets. I also added some shooting, which I'm going to show in a later tutorial. But uh, for now, what we want to focus on, we want to get a health bar into this game and then also be able to decrease that health bar if the player uh, hits a certain object. So let's start off with that. First things first, what you want to do is you want to create yourself a canvas. And that canvas you can create, I already have one here because uh, I added something else in there. But you can go and click UI and then add canvas. And with that, you can then click on the canvas and then add UI image. And when you come back to your game, you can see that you can't see anything. And that is awesome. And that is because you are not in 2D mode, so you cannot see what the canvas does or what's on the canvas. Um, in order to see that, you click up here to, on the 2D button and you switch to this very weird view, which you have to scroll out a lot. And then you have your canvas. So this is essentially what you are going to see as a layer on top of your camera. And right here we have the image that we just added. So we also want to go ahead and rename this to health bar BG for background. And then I also want to go ahead and click on here and make it onto the left corner and then drag the whole thing up here and make this look like a health bar. It doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, this is just for demonstration purposes. So I'm just going to drag this out a little bit. And then we have this nice little white bar. Um, so since this is going to be our background, I also want to make this a different color. So you click the health bar BG and then give this like a, I don't know, grayish kind of color, maybe. maybe a little bit darker. Yeah, that's fine by me. So this is how it's going to look once the health bar is actually empty. And now we want to add the green layer on top, which is actually, which will represent the health. So you go UI and add another image. So you end up with this another image. And now you just go ahead and lay that one on top of it. And now... We also want to call this maybe health bar foreground because I'm very creative. And now the smart people, they will uh, think, hey, well, I'm almost done here, right? Uh, I only need to do this in the game and that's it. But no, no so. You have to do it a little bit more. So what you essentially want to do is, because this will not really work once you do it with a script, don't ask me why, um, this takes too long to explain. So what you want to do is you want to go to your source image of that health bar 4G and then add a sprite to it. So in order to do that, you can add a PNG or JPEG to your project. And then once you have added that in, so I added a green picture of something, it just has to be a green background, just can be a PNG or JPEG, whatever, and you want to click on it. And then here on texture type, you do not want to have it on default. What you want to do is you want to go for Sprite 2D and UI. And that way you can actually use it on that image here. So then you apply those changes to it. And then once you are on the health bar on the foreground, you click on source image. In my case, it's going to be green. I have two want to uh, choose from, so I'm going to choose the green two. It's just two different images. And now what we can do is we can add a fill method. So 
if you click on image type, you click on filled, and then set the fill method to horizontal. And then if you move that fill bar, I'm gonna scroll scroll here so you can see a little bit better, zoom on. And now you can see that this health bar is actually looking like it's supposed to. So we can use that and then put some script on this. So whenever the player takes damage, we can decrease it. Yep, that's pretty much it. We also can look like how, how it looks in a game, if it's positioned just right. Yep, there we have it. We have our little green health bar. You can, of course, make that bigger or smaller. That's up to you. You can also give it a different image, different color. You know, maybe a more the pink health bar type. You know, I've heard there are people that like pink health bars. So maybe you're one of them. So go nuts. So the next thing is we want to make this health bar actually interactive, right? So we essentially have to add something that can damage our player. So we do not have that yet. So in order to add that, let's add a, you know, something very creative. Let's add a cube. Yeah, never ever somebody added a cube before. That's something unique. And this is a object that will be able to damage our player. And because it is able to damage our player, I think. Um, should probably have a different name. Uh, it's gonna be the evil cube, huh? you know, because it can hurt people. And yeah, also maybe, maybe, you know, since it's evil, maybe it should have a different color, I think. I feel like it should have a different color. You know, should be red, because the evil ones are always red in the movies, so. Maybe that's why I'm, you know, maybe it'll make it a little bigger. All right, enough of that nonsense. Let's do something. So we want to apply a script to that health bar so it can actually interact once that player hits that cube. For it to be able to do that, we need to add a script to it. So let's go to our health bar and let's add a health bar controller. Health bar controller. Click on edit script. Here in our script, uh, we want to add some code now. This might not look the same on yours. There will be some standard method. Um, however, I think most of you guys probably don't want to get too deep into the code. So that's why I set up a little site that is FireMind Academy. You know, I found it FireMind Academy. I'll link the tutorial in the description down below so you can find that. And on here we have a little intro and then also the video that you're watching right now and the code that you need for it. So we have the health bar controller CS here and you can just go here and copy the whole code, enter it here and you're done basically. Just to give you a quick, quick idea of what this actually does is there's a method and whenever the player takes damage, this method should be called. We will call this from a different script in the next step. And then there's a damage that comes in and you subtract that damage from the current health that you have, which equals the new health. And then you set the fill amount of our uh, health bar that we just created to a lower, a lower point. So once we save that, you can see that we now have these input values here. So we have the health bar itself, which is the image that we want to decrease. So the health bar foreground that goes there. So let's drag the health bar foreground onto this. And then also we have to set a health and a start health. Um, for this code, you always have to set them the same value. Otherwise it's gonna act weird. So don't do that. Just set them with the same value. Let's apply a hundred to it. And that's Gucci. So that's not going to happen much because that function which decreases the health bar is not getting called yet. So we actually need to call that. In order to do that, we're going to set a collision manager on this little rollerball here. So whenever he recognizes a collision, he will actually call that take damage function. So let's add a collision controller. So collision controller. Click on edit script here 
and then you have this new collision controller function and you can go back to the website and here you have the collision controller as well just copy it and in here we are calling the health bar controller the one that we just set up we make a in instance of it and then we have we go on collision so whenever a collision enters check the game tag of the object that collides with and we have our cube here which we also need to give a tag to so let's click that cube and we see here it's untagged and we want to give it the tag evil cube so I obviously created that tag so if you want to create a new tag go add tag click on the little plus sign here and add a new tag to it you can give that whatever you want you can also just give one of the default ones it's up to you so I'm gonna call that evil cube and then go back here and we can see if if it collides with an evil cube and if the health bar is actually there so because we have to drag that health bar on so sometimes you forget that so that it doesn't error on that function you want to check if the health bar is actually there and then once it is there go and uh, give it 10 damage if you collide with it once now let's go back into the scene and assign the proper values to it so you have your collision controller and here it awaits a health bar controller and I'm gonna give it that so you only have to drag the health bar BG on there and that's pretty much it now if we click play what we should see is we start off with our health bar here it looks all good and now once we jump onto that cube which I completely missed perfect we hit that cube you can see the health bar decreases so let's jump in again Bum. yep 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 there we go and that is pretty much it for today you know that's the evil cube bashing my little player take that take that okay that's for another tutorial if you like this tutorial please consider leaving me a like also if you want to check out more of my tutorials and support me please subscribe and if you have any questions, leave a comment below. Also, if you want to see another tutorial, can't find the tutorial you are looking for? Well, just ask for it then. Just go to tutorial-request.com and check out if other people are searching for the same tutorial as you do. If you find the matching request, make sure to leave it a like so other creators always know what's in demand. And if you can't find a request that you are looking for, just create a new one. Simply click on New Request, then choose a title, topic, and description for your request, and simply click on Make Request, and you're done. It's that easy. And with your request, you help creators know what's in demand. So go over to tutorial-request.com and sign up today. It's free.